Several people are dead and injured after a sudden and violent attack that police say looks deliberate. This happened in Germany, the northwestern city of Munster near the Dutch border. A man behind the wheel of a delivery van plowed into a crowd of people, killing two and injuring at least 20 others. Some of them are in critical condition right now. Witnesses say the van smashed into the open air section of a busy restaurant. The driver of that van is also dead. Police say he committed suicide with a gun right after the crash. Julian Reichelt is joining us now. He's the editor-in-chief of the German newspaper Bild. Julian, it's after 10 at night there now in Germany. This happened about 3 in the afternoon. I understand state officials just held a live press conference with reporters. What did they say? Well, they uh, basically talked uh, the media through what happened uh, today and uh, what they know about the perpetrator. Um, the one thing that is of highest importance here is that so far nothing points to an Islamist background, although the footprint of the attack certainly looked like it in the beginning. The perpetrator is a 48 or 49 year old uh, a German man um, who lived in the city of Münster, who has no criminal background, who uh, his neighbors describe as a, a completely un unknown uh, to him, someone who, who, never, uh, who never was special, who never stuck out. And um, uh, so far, there are there are no clear motives and, and no clear indication why he why he carried out this attack today. And why are federal officials so confident, though, that this man has no extremist motivations or connections at this point? It is still so early in the investigation. Well, so far, they are only confident about an Islamist background. Uh, they are not ruling out a political background. It's still very possible that he had some sort of a political motive. There were reports today that a, a political a pro-Kurdish demonstration uh, was was planned exactly in the spot where he carried out this attack uh, today. There are speculations about a more extreme political background of this uh, of this man, but so far that's only speculation. So, what they are uh, able to rule out right now is a possible Islamist background, but no political background. Okay, so they're saying no Islamic terrorism, at least at this point in the investigation. Sources also telling us that police officers are at this attacker's home, searching it. What are they looking for, do you know? Well, they are looking for possible clues into the motives of this, uh, of this person. Uh, from what we have learned from all police sources, um, apparently he may not only have one residence, but several uh, residence addresses, which uh, would be kind of strange usually in Germany where you're registered with your address, you have one address and not, not several. So um, this may be the first of uh, uh, a couple of raids uh, tonight. The uh, uh, German SWAT teams have entered um, the building about uh, an hour ago. Um, there were explosions heard, so um, we do not know why they used these kind of, uh, these kind of methods, um, but apparently they wanted to make sure that there's no one still left in the building who could uh, then attack them. So they, they went in quite uh, aggressively and now searching uh, the residence of the man who drove their truck to uh, learn more about his motive. Julian Reichelt in Germany, thank you for that update. Joining us now to talk thank more you. about this, two CNN law enforcement analysts, James Galliano and Josh Campbell, both are former FBI supervisory special agents. So James, police announced very quickly this was a deliberate attack and now also announcing quickly they don't see any ties to radical Islamic terrorism. Is there any information what we just heard that stands out to you? Sure, the attacker appears to be an anomaly from this sense, and I've been making some phone calls and talking to some counterterrorism experts. So we know that they're saying police right now are skeptical that this is an Islamist terrorist, but they're not saying that he wasn't an adherent to a particular political ideology. Remember, terrorism is you are conducting violence or intimidation in pursuit of political or social goals. Anna, real quickly, let's walk down what's happened over the last two years. 14 July 2016 in Nice, France, 86 killed, one attacker. 19 December 2016 in Berlin, yep. 12 killed, one attacker. 3 June of 2017, the London Bridge attack, you and I sat here and talked about it right. that night, eight killed and three attackers. 31 October 2017, right around the corner from us, the West Side Highway attack, eight dead. What is different about this attack that gives us pause is this fact. Most of the time, the folks that I've talked to that talk about Islamist terrorists, 
if they're going to conduct their terror attack, the martyrdom comes from giving their life in the pursuit. So if they use a bomb, they die in it. The bomb, they become part of the weapon. If they die by suicide by cop, martyrdom is still a possibility. In this instance, the attacker took his own life. By their rule book, that's cowardice. That's what makes hmm. us think there might be some type of mental instability here. And when we talk about the attacker, Josh, in this case, we know the driver killed himself, as James mentioned. The authorities have now said he is a German citizen. And based on Julian's reporting, he had no criminal background. What happens next? Yeah, great to be with you, Anna and Jimmy. Uh, next is going to be trying to fully identify this individual and everyone who was in his orbit. Having worked far too many of these investigations involving the loss of life overseas, I can tell you that there are two aspects. There's the part of the investigation that's seen and the part that's unseen. As we watch the pictures there of the crime scene and we saw earlier uh, footage of police officers processing, that's what is seen. We see the collection of physical evidence in order to determine what happened and how it happened. The second part, the unseen, is going to help us determine why it happened and get to that motive and until we fully identify the subject we won't yet know you know what his what his tendencies were who his contacts were that's a part of the investigation that's going to take some time in order to really suss that out and it's important because especially you know as you mentioned with the reporter earlier how close this was to the Dutch border you know this is something that may not just impact Germany but other countries as well so you know if you have other associates now is the time where they may be going underground they may be looking to you know escape uh, escape the, the uh, purview of law enforcement and so it's really going to be an all hands on deck approach and I can tell you and Jimmy spent time overseas as well uh, you know working with our foreign partners the fusion of information between intelligence services and law enforcement has come such so far um, you know from from early days where now we see it as just a matter of course that if one of these attacks happens and an individual is identified that information is quickly shared to other law enforcement services other intelligence agencies so that they can determine if they have information that may also help investigators locally. James, this isn't the first time we've seen a vehicle used in an attack, even in Germany specifically. You mentioned the Berlin attack. You tick through a bunch of other ones that have happened in Europe and here on U.S. soil. What do we know about the uptick in this type of attack, specifically, though, in Europe? Sure, and I've called for this. I mean, the United States is part of the Five Eyes. So we have intelligence sharing with, with four other partners. I think we need to expand that going forward. I also think we need to look at soft targets. I mean, we've seen the proliferation of shootings at schools. We've talked about hardening schools to make them a more difficult target for somebody bent on causing death and destruction there and immediately in the wake of the west side terror attack where the we talked about this this was on 30 31 october of this past year we talked about how quickly the new york city council came to be putting up the bollards along the west side highway they recognized that there were access routes that a vehicle could get on there where there were bike paths and, and passenger and routes where people could walk and they fixed that i think going forward we're going to have to look in the west at possibly doing a better job of separating pedestrian thoroughfares from vehicular traffic terror climate in europe we've talked a lot about this over the past few years. Josh, what more can you tell us about what's happening in that realm in this part of Germany? Well, I think it's important to first say, as we mentioned, you know, throughout our, our reporting today, that we're not yet clear whether this was terrorism. I think it's too early. Obviously, that's going to be something that investigators are going to look into. Uh, for the reasons that were mentioned earlier, it looks like, mm -hmm. you know, it is questionable when compared to some other attacks. But unfortunately, the, the climate is such that we've seen these type of incidents in the past. And when you look at individuals and, and back at some of the recent in, uh, instances of terrorism, individuals are either inspired or sometimes directed by those who are overseas. And that's why it's going to be very important to fully identify this person to determine and I'm saying if it's terrorism it's a big if but if it is terrorism what caused that motivation is this something that he you know came to on his own or what, did he have contacts that now investigators and law enforcement are going to want to you know determine and see if they're actually inspiring other people as well it's a Herculean effort in order to go and, and dig into someone's past but they're going to be looking at that digital footprint they'll look at everything in his orbit as mentioned his contacts his associates his communications mediums in order to determine because as you know you mentioned this isn't the first time we've seen these type of incidents. And as we look to you know, the Middle East, I mean, we've, we've talked a lot about ISIS you know, in recent, uh, recent years. As they are crushed, there will be fighters that are returning home, that are going back. So just because we're taking land away from them doesn't mean we're going to be taking away that ideology. So it very much remains a threat. Right. 
And as you point out, it doesn't look like this has any tie to Islamic terrorism or radical Islamist terrorism, according to the officials in their latest press conference. Um, but James, back to the fact that this is a tactic we have seen used by other terrorists in the past, using a vehicle to create chaos, to create death and injury. What do law enforcement officials do knowing this is increased in frequency? How are they combating this? Yeah. I mean, the West, we, we pride ourselves on civil liberties. We pride ourselves on living in democracy, and you're able to do what you want to do with limited restrictions, and it's difficult. We can certainly chart when people buy firearms. You know, we, we, that conversation has been going on here for a while, but how do we deal with this? This isn't somebody that's buying components to a bomb. It's not somebody buying large amounts of fertilizer or diesel fuel. This is a vehicle and somebody owns a vehicle and they have a valid driver's license. It really, they're not on our radar. Very, very difficult. I think what's going to be important here is to look at the digital footprint of this individual. It's the 21st century. Everyone seemingly has a digital footprint. What that digital exhaust from, you know, their iPads, their phones, who they called, were there any associates involved in this, or was this just a mentally disturbed individual? And on it, it's a difficult thing. You and I have talked about this so many times before. We want to sometimes people that are just evil or people are mentally disturbed, we want to try to attach some motive to it, and sometimes that's really difficult to do.